And welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I hope you're having a wonderful morning wherever it is you watching us from. And of course, um, that you're enjoying the show. Like we say, just uh, take it easy. If you're at home, you can take a cup of tea or coffee and relax and, uh, and also soaking the wonderful analysis coming away. And talking of analysis, we have uh, uh, a, an interesting guest up next uh, to do justice to the next topic. I'll introduce her in a bit. But let's uh, quickly give you a background. We're looking at, at uh, uh, unemployment in the country and what it means to lose a job in Nigeria. Uh, the country has been ranked the third worst place in the world for workers uh, to be laid off. Uh, Nigeria ranked the third worst country uh, with a 1.19 over 10 a layoff score behind Puerto Rico, uh, behind Puerto Rico and the United States of America, according to a report published by Lensa, a career advisory website. The report explained that uh, despite enforcing the uh, 4 over 9 redundancy rules, Nigeria still does not guarantee employees any severance package on being laid off. The report claims that after a year of employment, businesses in Nigeria give employees at least a week's notice before firing them. Um, in, this is what is said, a quote in third place, as the report said, a quote in third place, Nigeria ranks, uh, in third place ranks Nigeria with 1.19 over 10 layoff score. Nigeria enforces a four slash nine redundancy rule However, still does not guarantee you any severance package, said the report. You do at least get a notice period one week for employees with a one-year tenor and 4.3 for employees with over five. Um, also on the list of worst nations for workers to get laid off behind Nigeria are New Zealand, Djibouti, United Arab, em uh, United Arab Emirates, Singapore, Romania, Austria, and Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, we're glad to say joining us on like this is uh, Professor Abiola Woshika Fapetu, uh, educationist, and uh, she joins us via Zoom in Lagos or from Lagos. Prof, good morning to you and thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, indeed. Uh, Prof, I mean, uh, looking at the, the headline, you know, Nigeria ranking third west in the world, it, it jump, uh, jumps out at one and obviously gives some reasons to be worried because nobody wants to be third worst than anything. Uh, but I see that we're behind the United States and Puerto Rico. Not bad company, some would say. As a matter of fact, when we get into uh, such company as this, uh, I, I wonder about the data when we're lumped with the United States and Puerto Rico, which are probably essentially the same because Puerto Rico is a part of the United States. Um, I, I worry about the data. I'm probably going to assume that this is only referring to our public sector uh, em employment, because we have about seven, 720,000 in the public service. That is less than 1% of us. And at the time when this data was collected, this was at the height of the COVID-19 uh, palaver. And so a lot of the small, medium enterprises that employ most of us are in trouble. They're laying people off, they're cutting jobs, but these people are only going to uh, think of how they're going to survive. They're not going to think of, you know, how am I going to now start paying people when I don't even have money to, to keep them in my employment. So I think uh, we, we, we probably are not taking into account the fact that the majority of us, 89 point something percent, almost 90 percent, work for medium uh, and small enterprises. And these are the worst hit hit organizations. And so they cannot afford uh, the, the, the severance pays. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, I've been in, the, the, in Nigeria and in the employment market in Nigeria for about 10 to 12 years now. And you know what? Our people don't know what is called, you know, uh, how to give notice. So they don't give you notice, they just walk away. So 
how do you give that kind of a person uh, a severance pay when they just walk away? So they don't understand the system and the policy is not uh, uh, strong enough to be imbibed by the small and medium enterprises who hire most of the people. And what the, the point one nine percent that they got is probably from the public sector, which hires only 720,000 as at 2022. So uh, I think uh, that's the major problem is letting the people know what the policies are, uh, the employees keeping to those policies, and the employers uh, being held uh, to the policies. But right now, I don't think we're there. Right. Um, indeed, you you raised um, you know some questions about uh, the the veracity of this statistic, and uh, uh, you know uh, I think I think these are questions that need to be asked because um, there's some things are a bit not too clear about the ranking. But um, I think we can we can agree. You know, if we want to just overlook some of the uh, questions that uh, hover around this report. I think we can agree over. Uh, uh, we can agree about the um, the reality for Nigerian workers, or for workers in Nigeria. Um, a lot of people are at work today. Absolutely. Yes, they don't have. I mean, people don't have jobs. Yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, please, Prof, go on. Yeah, I mean, folks who even do need jobs, new jobs, don't have it, and so. Uh, and, and we're now saying, uh, rather than employ new or fresh people, we should put some money aside uh, to be taking care of people uh, who we had to lay off or who left. Uh, the, the whole thing is, is, is modeled up until we have a good system where when you get out of university or whatever training you've had, you walk into the job market, and you know you're hired, you get uh, employed. Uh, uh, some of the money that we're getting from you is being put aside so that we can uh, 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 take care of people who who might lose their jobs. We don't have anything like that. And so, and and even the United States that we're supposed to be in the same category uh, as they are, they still even have some things. You know, for people to fall back on, they have they have unemployment uh, benefits, you know, that they give uh, their, their their people, and yet we are ranked at you know at the same level. So it it, it just bothers me that you know we, we, we don't have the 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 the, the strong uh, policies and the strong uh, system that will help people who get out of a job. Not to talk of people who don't even have jobs at all. Oh, oh. Indeed, uh, Prof, Prof. So, so these realities are there, like you've said. Um, um, you know, uh, reality for a lot of, of Nigerian workers is that uh, it's almost as if the the employees. I mean, um, you, you've you've worked and lived outside the country. You know how how you know strongly how how we have strong laws and strong uh, rules about employment. You can't just employ people and treat them anyhow. Um, you have a minimum wage. If it's per hour, they pay to pay them per hour. If it's per, per month, they pay to pay them per month, and you stick to that minimum wage. Uh, in Nigeria, you know, I'm speaking as a worker, um, it's almost as if, you know, just getting the job is a favor, and you just have to accept whatever comes your way, you know. Um, people are giving contracts, and employees don't stick to the terms of those contracts. So uh, we see a situation where, and I'm not saying you can't ask, a worker to to you know to to pull in and and try and help a company through difficult times, but um, it's almost taken as as for granted and as a given that they can tell you to do anything, you know. So when you have a contract that says this is what you're supposed to do as a specific A B C, um, they can tell you and we're paying you X Y Z amount of money for doing A B C. They can say do you know X Y Z add more than five more things to your portfolio and you have to do it because it's almost as if if you don't do it then we're going to look for someone else to do it and you should be thankful that you have a job you know so workers seem to have no rights in this country 
I mean, I'm going to pour my heart out to you as a worker. We have Nigerian workers. And I think that the labor laws are skewed against workers and in favor of the companies and give in their loopholes. Even though we have strong laws, there are loopholes. You can't even hold a company, take them to court. You know, that's one. Okay, the, 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 the whole idea of feeling, you know, that uh, you, you're being given a favor because you gave you this job. You should just be thankful that you have a job. The second thing is that a lot of workers yeah. are, are old. Some, some companies owe workers, you know, two months, three months salary. A lot of workers don't get paid on time. And in other parts of the world, you can't try it. You know, if you, it's a lot of responsibility. That's the second thing workers face. They don't get paid on time, no communication, no email, nothing, you know, from the employers. You know, the third thing is, is they make you sign contracts. Some, some of them make you sign contracts to, to, to stop you from unionizing. They tell you you can't be part of a union. You know, um, you, can't, you can't work for any, like in the media industry, you can't work for any station for six months if you leave us. You know, um, some of them would, would, would make you, of course, you have to sign and you have to stick to the rules. It's even there that you give maybe a month or two months notice as the case may be before you leave which is the right thing to be done, like you said. But some companies will fire you and won't give you even a week's notice. And then, of course, we talked about the severance package. So what are your thoughts on some of the things I've talked about that workers in Nigeria go through? Uh, unfortunately, uh, when there are no consequences for breaking the law, uh, then the law, is, it, it, the law is not enforced. Uh, uh, there has to be consequences. And if you cannot form a union, unfortunately, when, you're, you're, when you're, you're asked to leave, you don't have money, and so you can't go to court. Uh, and if you sign an agreement that says you can't join a union, uh, then that is very unfortunate because now you're up a creek without a paddle. So uh, uh, it, we have to start with enforcement. Um, even pensions that employees are supposed to have, a lot of employers don't give those pensions, such that even when the employee has to leave, uh, you know, you give them uh, a, month in, uh, a, uh, a month ahead, and then you pay the pension that you know, they have either contributed to or not. But you know they don't. You don't get some employers don't even pay that, and uh, unless there is a way that we can enforce uh, some of these, uh, you know, um, nine uh, severance uh, policies, then I don't think the lot of the employee in Nigeria is going to improve. Because once they leave, uh, they don't have anything. And they can't take action unless they find a pro bono lawyer that's going to take up their cause. But then if you get a pro bono lawyer that takes up one or two causes, maybe we'll put them on notice. But unless that happens, I don't think, uh, because uh, our employers are mostly small and medium enterprises. They're so small that you know they can't survive. Uh, if they now, um, they, they're hold, they're folding up. That asking people to leave because they don't have any money to 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 keep the business going. A lot of businesses closed down uh, during the um, uh, 2020 uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, problems, and that is it's it's, it's simply because they cannot fund their existence. So how do you now tell them to fund the existence of an employee that they no, they no longer even gain anything out of? So it's, it's a conundrum, you know, that we have to, you know, sit back as a nation and say, what do we do for these people? Do we start an uh, unemployment uh, program where you can apply once you lose your job? And you know, have the government pay you for so many months uh, until you get a job? You know, do we make it a, a, a government thing? Otherwise, it's 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 difficult. Oh, oh. 
Indeed, indeed. Uh, you, you, you've, you've made a case for, for the companies, uh, which is, uh, I mean, it's a good one because the companies are going through difficult times. Um, uh, you know, but I, I mean, sometimes one will have little to no sympathy for them because the workers kill themselves, you know, for the companies. And um, uh, uh, for, for me, I must, I'm, I mean, if I want to be playing with you, I, I got fired in the middle of, in fact, in the middle of the pandemic. I, I, I got cut by, by company. Uh, I was telling someone the story, um, you know, they let a lot of people go. And I think it was, it was too premature. I think it was unfair um, because some of us had worked in the company for, for nine years, almost 10 years, you know. Personally, I was the I was longest serving staff and this just said, oh, you know what? The economy may take a downswing, so we have to let people go. And they cut me. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair to the company, I got the severance package and that helped me greatly. I helped me, but there are a lot of other companies that don't have such a rank, arrangement. This is a properly run company. You know, but what was a bit of a, 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 a you know, disadvantage was I signed, a, I was made to sign a contract you know, that said I couldn't work for any other media organization for, I think, about uh, six months. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you see, you see, so, um, um, but you've said the companies go through a lot and it's not easy to be a business owner in Nigeria, uh, definitely. Um, but should, should we have, you know, sympathy for the companies when you need to know, okay, this is how it is to be in business. And if you are not ready to be in business, don't, don't get into it because you have to pay uh, salaries. Uh, Doc, because... You know, some people start start businesses, I can speak of media businesses, without a plan. They want to make money within 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 two two weeks, you know, within the, within the first month. And then they get people's kids, you know, people's fathers and mothers, brothers, into the company without a plan. And then after one month they say, Okay, we're not making money, we can't pay you. I think that is that is criminal. <coughs> yes. So so yeah. <laughs> Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Well, you can't tell people not to start businesses. Because when they start, <coughs> Sorry, excuse me, yeah. when they start, they have a hope. They think it's going to go well. But then when, for example, a COVID-19 happens, what do you do? And uh, I think the employees... <coughs> Sorry, Prof. I think the employees also, uh, you, you know what you were doing when you were signing uh, in a non-compete a non or non-compete uh, uh, clause uh, in your contract. And you're hoping you'd, you would have to uh, 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 compete with your employer. That's why you signed it. And so uh, you, you have to look at it both ways. Uh, the employer has no business <coughs> not paying you, and you have no business uh, competing with your employer if you sign that you will not be competing with him. So it's, it's, it's a case of um, who gives in first, okay. the employer or the employee. I think the reason why they let people go is because they cannot afford it. I mean, if you start a business for a month and then you fold up, that is very sad because you probably didn't put any thought into that uh, business. But you know, if you, if you, I mean, it is proven that you know, if you survive the first two years, uh, you will, you will be able to stay uh, in line uh, in that business. And then, if you survive the the first five years. You have come to stay. So businesses that are in their early years, uh, you cannot hold them oh. to the you know, problem yeah. of uh, 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 not being able to pay yeah. uh, severance yeah. to their employees. Okay. But if you have if you have grown enough and you're strong enough, uh, you have no business. Not paying severance to your employees. All right, Prof. Prof I'll allow you to take a breather. Um, I'll ask the next question. If you have some water, maybe you can just sit, drink a little. Um, but sorry about yeah, about that's, that. That, that. That's fine. I'm I'm fine now. All right, all right. Uh, um, so so yes, you've said indeed. Um, you know, but Prof. Sometimes you know the the workers. You know, you look at okay, what do you have? You know, to do. I'm a realist. I like being real. 
And sometimes you look at, okay, can I do without this job? Do I need it? And a lot of people uh, approach jobs from a point of need. And that's why they sign contracts like you cannot unionize, for instance. You know, so I don't know if, if, if government needs to look into this. But I'll read Section 4 of the Labor Act, the Nigerian Labor Act. Um, it says, uh, subsection 1, says, No employer uh, may make to a worker um, an advance of wages in excess of one month. Um, I'm trying to get a place where uh, it says it gives uh, you know, some protection to the workers. But there, there are laws, there are, there are provisions in the Labor Act that you know, talk about you know, how long you can owe the worker, you know, the severance packages that must be paid. They call it in lieu, all right? So if the worker doesn't give you notice and just leaves, you don't pay them anything. Um, if, if, if the worker gives the sufficient notice according to law, law um, you, if, sorry, if the worker does not give you notice, the worker has to pay you uh, for the, in lieu of the yeah, month. That's, they that's are, in Yes. In lieu of notice. Yes, yes. And then if you, you, you want to sack the worker, you have to give severance package. And if you don't give them notice, you sack them immediately. Of course, you pay them in lieu of the notice, which is what uh, yes. was done for me. And, uh, and my company did that perfectly, excellently. Um, so for those who don't do this, who don't stick to this law, um, should the government be uh, you know, rejigging the laws to enforce fines on them and to protect the workers? Because not... Many workers don't have the money to go to the National Industrial Court, you know, the, the funds, they don't have that. Well, unfortunately, if you can't go to, to court with your employer, uh, I don't see what your recourse would be because the law is there. The law, I mean, I, I just recently, um, uh, uh, someone told me, uh, I'm going to leave you in about uh 30 days and i immediately think she should leave now because i don't want her to be with the rest of the employees and start polluting the system there's nothing we're doing that is you know uh against the law but i just want to keep the sanity of my people so that we don't have any and immediately i paid her in lieu of notice, I paid her uh, uh, her pension. I paid her everything that 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 I owe her, and then told her to leave immediately. Now, because we know what the law says, a lot of companies don't know, and yes, ignorance of the law is no excuse. So, if you can take one or two people to court, and you can win then people will be on notice to know that if I ill-treat my people, this is what is going to happen to me. And I'm quite sure that, you know, if, if, if one or two companies are made the scapegoat uh, in, in, uh, under this law, because there, we have laws. It's not like we don't. We have laws, but we're not following it. So let's make sure, you know, that you know, we do follow these laws. And, you know, how we would do it without the courts, I don't know. Oh. All right. Uh, is there, is there, is there a, because, uh, I mean, the government did some, some things to help uh, uh, some workers. I know that um, some monies were paid to, to teachers, you know. In fact, um, some schools received uh, a request from the government to apply for funds that were shared to teachers because teachers were at home during the pandemic. They were not laid off, you know, but uh, the schools couldn't cope. They couldn't pay because fees were not coming in. It was a difficult time for some businesses, like you said. Um, is, is there a role government can, can play um, to make it easier uh, for, you know, pe people, professionals and workers who are, who are let go, who have lost their jobs, um, to, to, to survive? Is that something Nigeria no. can look in? So you mentioned that a little bit, like the welfare system we have, in, in the United States and other parts of the world. That's number one. Number two, how can government support, can government support, do you foresee, do you see a situation where government can support businesses in times of difficulty to stay afloat and to be able to pay salaries, at least if you have emergencies like a pandemic? And, and you know, <clears throat> this government actually did some of that. Uh, uh, my school 
is actually one that benefited from the government's uh, solution, the support that they gave. Uh, uh, they, they gave uh, uh, some categories of industries, and education was one of them. And I applied. I didn't know anyone. I just put all my information online, and they called me. They called my employees, and they paid the school some amount of money for three months. And they also paid, you know, some of my employees for three months during COVID. So yes, the government should be on standby, you know, to help companies, to help them survive, because they are the mainstay of this economy. As you know, they hire the, the greater percentage of us. If you take 720,000 out of 200 million, it's not even 1%. Those are the civil servants and the public workers. The rest of us are in the private sector. So they need to keep the private sector moving and afloat. And they did some of that, you know, but they need to do more. Hmm. All right. I, the word I'm hearing in my, in my head is, you know, stimulus packages. Uh, you know, in some countries, the government was giving companies money to help them stay afloat, loans and grants. Yeah you know, uh, to help them stay afloat. I'm happy you you were a recipient of the federal government, you know, support and yeah. you able to give us a yeah. practical uh, experience. Um, uh, Nigerian workers are, are not as protected as they should be by the laws. You know, if you Absolutely. look at overtime, a lot of workers work overtime without a COBOL, you know, uh, for that overtime. Thank you, Prof, yeah, very much for your time. Oh, okay, thank you yeah, so you, much. You sound like a good employer who will work as a really, really be happy to work for, you know, and from things you've said. <laughs> Professor Abiola Awashika Fapitu is an educationist and she's been a guest on the first uh, discussion this morning on Breakfast. Prof, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, the rights of workers really, really is, uh, we, need to, we can't talk enough about that and, uh, you know, uh, how workers really go through a lot, a whole lot, just to uh, survive in this country. Um, I think government needs to do more. The laws are skewed. The labor laws are skewed in the favor of the companies and doesn't protect work as much. We'll take a break now and when we return, we look at um, a projection by... Uh, we'll look at the situation between the herders and farmers. The crisis has been there for years and the federal government is seeking long-term solutions to ensure that this is solved. We'll talk about this when we return. Please stay with us.